What's up YouTube? This is Dennis from Utah4Tutorials.eu. In this video we will talk about modding and the importance it has for a game's lifespan. Also a bit about how you could make your game moddable. Now let me clear one thing up first. I always do my first playthrough playing the game in vanilla. So fully unmodded. The way the devs intended. And you should too. I know that the Game of Thrones mod for your favorite RTS looks amazing, but at least give it a chance first. Experience it how it should be. After that, if you want, you can turn Alduin into Thomas the Tank Engine, but experience the game first how it was initially envisioned. And for the devs out there, there are a lot of people out there like me, so relying on the modding scene for your game to be good is not a path that should be taken. With that out of the way, man, I love mods. I mean, people have been waiting six years now for Elder Scrolls 6 to come out and I, with the power of mods, basically already played all the way to Elder Scrolls 13 by now. Every time I downloaded the game and started my 16 hour modding session, I ended up with a completely different game and experience. It's like having a totally different game each time. Same thing with Fallout, City Skylines and even the GTA games. And I'm not even necessarily talking about GTA 5, but GTA 4, which is better in many ways than 5. And even San Andreas. Like the other day, I installed Oblivion again. A 15, yes, 15 year old game. And it was amazing. This shows how modding can truly make a game immortal. When a 15 year old game has still a big active player base. And that always made me think, why don't more studios try and make their games moddable? I mean, it's beneficial in any case and probably pretty easy to implement, right? Yeah, not really. Depending on the game you have, sometimes mods can be everything but beneficial. Imagine a multiplayer game, not even necessarily a competitive one. Modding can introduce malicious features that severely worsen the experience for players. Obviously, an auto-aim mod for a competitive shooter game can't be a good thing. But even things like those trainers for GTA titles can make your online experience not fun at all. And sure, sometimes you will have fun with them. But then a not so fun gamer comes in and just spawns a million cruise ships crashing everyone's game. And that's not even an uncommon thing. Take the crashes in VR chats for example. Look them up. Not fun. It's incredibly difficult as a game developer to control these scenarios and most of the time it's just not worth the hassle. Sometimes even developers feel like mods will hurt a player's experience in single player titles since people won't play it the way it was meant to be. And I totally get that. The first time I played Skyrim I modded the absolute sweet roll out of it. And my opinion of the game once over was, hey that was fun but yeah not that great I guess. Years later I replayed the game without mods and man, when I truly felt what the developers wanted me to feel, the magic, the immersion, things I just haven't gotten before, that's when I fell in love. And don't get me wrong, that was the first and last time I played vanilla. I just missed Thomas way too much to not mod again, you know? But what, that was the playthrough that made me fall in love with the game. That's why I always say, vanilla first, mod second. Another issue a lot of studios face is brand control. Mods are community made with no restrictions and no boundaries, literally. Like I mean that no boundaries, imagine the only thing you know about Resident Evil Village is that one funny mod that was made in less than a day for Lady Dimitrescu. Like less than a day. Truly impressive, but that would place the franchise and even the developers in a pretty bad light. Sure, you might know that that's not a thing the developer studio made, but a good percentage of people don't. They see adult mods and non-adult games and even get all angry mode on the studio and just a bunch of problems. And then there is obviously the money. If you are a studio and you need to make money and if your monetization scheme is annual games and DLCs, the added longevity that mods give a game are not something you even want. You actually want players to stop playing your previous game so they buy your new one. 
how many times did we see people complaining about that one mod making a better DLC than the studio itself? Do you think that'll increase the DLC sales? Don't think so. Are you going to buy a player skin when some mod already added like 7? No, you obviously aren't. Games need, like any other businesses, to make money. And if mods make the developers earn less, well, then it's just not an option. Quick pause. The video that you're currently watching is just a fraction of the entire course that I have to offer. So I built this complete Unity Masterclass course in which you are going to learn how to build real games and how to build them from scratch. So you're going to learn how to build a platformer game, how to build a Space Invaders clone, how to build a Fruit Ninjas clone and optimize it for mobile and export it for mobile as well, how to build a first person shooter game and finally how to build a tycoon game similar to Adventurists, which is an endless game. So if you want to become a real game developer, definitely check out the course. You can find the link in the description and you will get the course with a huge discount. So don't hesitate as you will not only get the course, but you will also get it in a structured manner with all of the code as well as a Q&A section with a five star support. So get the course now. I hope to see you there. And then there is time. Making a game moddable is simple, right? Well, no. Especially with engines that don't provide modding tools like, well, <laughs> Unity, modding functionalities have to be handcrafted and games that include mods have to be fully built around this functionality. It's time consuming and expensive. Depending on the grade of modality you want your game to have, even taking a good half of the development of the game. But still, it can be done. From simple tweaks in your development all the way to entire frameworks and tools, the options at least are a lot. Modding can have its downsides, but it can have a lot of upsides as well. And when your game can really profit from it, or if community building is really important to you because modding is what creates the best and biggest communities, then it can be still really worth it. Let's actually go through some things you can do for your own game. Starting with something simple, like textures. You probably saw a lot of games having it a simple texture replacement mod and these things usually don't even need any developer side work. But we can still try and make it easier for players to do. The basic idea of making your game as moddable as possible is to make everything work with the game using external assets. So a player could just replace a texture from the textures file and done. We have a mod. That's basically achieved by loading images as files using, for example, Unity's image conversion mod. The issue is that this can result in pretty long loading times and huge game file sizes since compression isn't really a thing anymore. But sometimes when that's not an option, we can always go with asset bundles. These let you specify the texture import setting and even compression in the inspector directly. Here loading times and file sizes stay small but user friendliness suffers a bit. A modder can't just swap out a texture in the asset bundle folder and call it a day. Asset bundles need special tools to extract its contents to then build their own asset bundles to be used in game. Usually the second option is still preferred since leaving textures in a separate file can seriously burst the player's experience to the point where moddability does just not justify it. What about models or even animations? Well, asset bundles are still an option here as well. But why not take a look at the addressable asset system, also called addressables. The system provides an easy way to load assets by address. It handles asset management overhead by simplifying content pack creation and deployment. What does that even mean? Well, basically an address identifies the location in which something resides. Once an asset is marked as addressable, it can be called from anywhere, whether it resides in the local player or on a network. This system will just be able to call it from wherever it is and use it. Think of it like a phone number where you can just call it no matter where in the world it's at, since you already got the direct reference to it. Make sure to subscribe since we will be making a full guide about using addressables for your games in the new future. And I'm sure you don't want to miss it. Well, I guess the main part would be covered with that. Even audio can be modded using the previous methods, but what about scripts and core functions and mechanics? 
even though there are assets in the Unity store or small tools that can be made just for this task, if modding goes to that level, a full framework will be best. What are these frameworks and tools? Well, for example, things like umod2.0 and mod tool on the Unity store can easily help you to make your game moddable. Even giving modders simple to use tools to directly use through the Unity editor, from textures to entire scenes. But these do rely on modders having at least some Unity development knowledge and, well, using the Unity editor. Sometimes you just want them to make something without leaving the game or use a homemade tool that you provide them with. The thing is though, it's a homemade tool. This means development of tools and or software, which will mean a significant amount of work. What tools could those be? Well, think of your typical map builder and basically every, yeah, just that every game. I feel like even games that really don't need one have a map builder nowadays. Well, that would be an example of a modding tool, a simple in-game tool for players to make their own maps, a community-made modification to the game, a mod. Or think about the more obvious asset editor from City Skyline, a Unity game that directly lets you make and implement assets from inside the game. And it's pretty solid as well, giving you a lot of options to choose from. Basically, what I want to say with this is, even though modding isn't made for every game or developer out there, those times where it is, you have a ton of options about implementing this and don't need to just make your entire game open source or something like that. And the value mods can give to your game, when properly done, is literally immeasurable. Hey, at least consider it. And well, if you guys want us to make more videos about modding, you know what to do. Just let us know down below. Alright, that's enough. My 200 mod Skyrim playthrough is waiting for me to finally start it. Bye.